This is part two of moving to the next level of your life. To move to the next level of your life, understand that Jesus Christ is the power and the wisdom of God. Jesus Christ is the power and the wisdom of God. I heard Paul say from the book of First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. So it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligence I will frustrate. God made foolish the wisdom of the world. God made foolish the wisdom of the world. The wisdom of the world is part of sensual wisdom. The wisdom of the world is unspiritual. The wisdom of the world is demonic. Demonic wisdom, sensual wisdom, and spiritual wisdom. That is what we call witchcraft. And then we have wisdom that comes from above. It's pure. For God gave wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. You need the wisdom of God. When that wisdom is at work, you will achieve greatness. You have to move to the next level of your life when the wisdom of God is at work in your hand. He said in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jew and Greek, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Raise your voice said loud and clear. Jesus Christ Jesus. is the power of God and the wisdom of God. He said, for the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom. And the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. In life, the one that you see is successful may not be successful. In life, the one that you see is successful may be successful for a period of time because he's saving somebody. The moment he stops, the moment he start doing funny things, that wisdom will go away. I've seen many people in top position with great wisdom. But the moment they began to misbehave, all those abilities, those honor is taken away. So to move to the next level of your life, you need to learn something from the life of Aitofel. Aitofel was a great counselor. From the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 26, 2 Samuel, chapter 16, verse 23, 2 Samuel, chapter 16, verse 23, now, in those days, the advice of Aitofel gave was like that of one who inquire of God. That was how both David and Absalom regarded all Aitofel's advice. If you ask for advice, if you want Aitofel to counsel you, he will speak like the oracle of God. 
you will say you will be amazed. It will give you great insight. But those things was there only because he was a kingmaker. There are people around the king. The king will never wear his own shoe. There are people that will put the shoe on the feet of the king and tie the lacet. There are people that must choose the socket that the king has to put on, the kind of dress he has to put on. King makers. You will never see them in the front line. They are behind the scene. They are dressing somebody. They are pushing somebody forward. Haithophel was one of them. God invested so much wisdom on him to help in the ministry, in the kingdom of David. When he joined Absalom, he, be, he became like a monster with two heads. It's already a problem. And we've seen in life, these things happen a lot from lawyers that are judging somebody. You will go to this lawyer to handle your situation, the same lawyer will begin to collect on the other side. Be very careful. God gave you that wisdom not to abuse it. Don't make money that way. I will tell you two or three things that you will understand. By the way, I'm not here to pick on lawyer. I wish to be one of them, but I'm one of them because I judge demons here. <laughs> you judge human being, I judge demons. Praise the Lord. Hmm. Aitofel was very wise. Great counsel. He was nobody, by the way. But because he had to work in the kingdom, he had to help King David. But he joined Absalom. There are a few things we need to learn here today. The Bible says in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 14, verse 25, 2 Samuel chapter 14, verse 25, I want us to see this gentleman. Read with me if you can. In all Israel, there was not a man so highly praised for his handsome appearance as Absalom from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. There was no blemish in him. Today you see they talk about beauty pageant. Uh, the most beautiful man, the, the most beautiful woman. I don't know, but that's what I saw. It did not start with them. Don't blame them. Look at the way they praise Absalom. In all Israel, there was not a man so highly praised for his handsome appearance as Absalom. He was handsome. All the brothers here, we are ugly. <laughs> when Solomon is coming, everybody break. Every lady will break. Okay, that is a piece of mind I wish to give you. Now, let us see Second Samuel chapter 15, verse 31. Read with me if you can. Now, David has been tall. Ahitophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. So David prayed, Lord, turn Ahitophel counsel into foolishness. Stand up on your feet. I want you to pray. I don't know your Ahitophel, but remove the name of Ahitophel, otherwise he will be waiting for you outside there. I want you to take the name of conspirators. Because that one, you will not miss it. Amen. Amen. You will pray, Father. Father. 
What are you waiting for? Oh, so you came to be motivated, so you can feel good. I want to change a few things. There are things in your life that need to change now. Amen. If you take your car for service, they don't service it. Will you be happy? Uh, so you came for service, so we start dealing with the stuff now. Put that scripture back again on the screen. Go ahead, read it out loud. Now, David has been taught. Ahitophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. So, David prayed, Lord, turn Ahitophel counsel. You will raise your voice and pray like this. Father, any conspirators that have joined the wicked, turn their counsel into foolishness. 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 In your office, they are conspirators. Pray that the Lord is turning their counsel into foolishness. In your business, they are conspirators. Pray that the Lord is turning their counsel into foolishness. In your house, they can be conspirators. Pray that the Lord is turning their counsel into foolishness. Turn their counsel into foolishness. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Please, you may sit down. Wonderful. Now, I can't even stop the service. I'm happy because something's done. Conspirators. Absalom. <laughs> David, somebody will say bad luck. But that was the laugh of David. This man was running away from Saul. He was anointed to be king. And now for him to sit on the throne, he's running from one cave to another mountain. From one place to another. He's running for his life, David. They already anointed him to go and sit on the throne, but no ways. And when he was enjoying the throne, his own son arose against him in his house. His own son stood against him. And he was running for <laughs> Solomon to not to abuse him or take off his life. He prayed. You can say that the prayer was not against Absalom. The prayer was against the one that is giving counsel. Turn his counsel into foolishness. Say it again. Any height of hell. I don't need to know you. Father, turn the counsel of height of hell into foolishness. That's enough. Hallelujah. And just watch out what that prayer did for David. David did not complain to his own people. Even the people that came to say, Ahitophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. He just told God one word. Learn to be men and women of prayer. Amen. You want to move to the next level of your life? In the place of going to fight for your name, for your reputation, Spend your time in the altar of prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. One fake day, because Ahitophel must advise Absalom is already on the other side. Second Samuel, chapter 16, verse 20. Absalom say to Ahitophel, give us your advice. What should we do? Remember the advice of Ahitophel is like somebody that inquire of God. When Ahitophel will speak, it's like God in heaven is speaking. Oh. Absalom said to Ahitophel, Absalom is already on the wrong side. Because David prayed, do you think Aitofel will give good advice now? 
You just pray one prayer. Turn the counsel of fire to fall into foolishness. You can make it your own soul. Amen. Amen. You know what was the counsel of Ahithophel to Absalom? Verse 21. Ahithophel answered, Sleep with your father's concubine, whom he left to take care of the palace. Then all Israel will hear that you have made yourself obnoxious to your father and the hand of everyone with you will be, will be more resolute. <laughs> you see, the counsel of the wise. I believe Paul was correct to say God made foolish the wisdom of the world. And then what happened? Verse 22. So they speech, they they pitch a tent for Absalom on the roof and he slept with his father's concubine in the south of all Israel. This is where Facebook started. And uh, other social media, internet, whatever, they started that day. Everybody must see the way you do it. Check. Now, the wise men say to us from the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 25. I want to talk about the wise men. This is what he said Do not last in your heart after her beauty, or let it captivate you with her eyes. Verse 26. For a prostitute can be had for a loaf of bread, but another man's wife prey on your very life. Verse 27. Can a man scoop fire into his lap without his clothes being burned? I don't know. I don't have an answer for that one. Verse 20. 29. Can a man walk on hot coals without his feet being scorched? I don't have also the answer for that one. I believe you can answer. So he is he who sleep with another man's wife. No one who touches her will go and punish. Look at your neighbor. Tell me her. If you touch somebody's husband, you will not go and punish. If you touch somebody's wife, you are not smart. You will not go and punish. I don't know where the Spirit of God is taking us with this message again, but God is warning somebody. And I want to pull your ears like your father. Be very careful. Change your lifestyle. This is the word of God. This is not the word of man. You cannot change it. You cannot remove it. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 32. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 32. But a man who commits adultery has nonsense. Whoever does so, destroy himself. A man who commits adultery has nonsense. Whoever does so destroy himself. Hmm. Verse 32. Read with me loud and clear. Verse, 30, verse 33. Blow and disgrace are his lot, and the shame will never be wiped away. I hear people telling me, nothing is happening. I'm praying. You see me in the altar praying. I say, yes. I see you. Your physical body praying. 
But in your spirit mind, there is nothing there. You're still wandering outside. Blow and disgrace on those who commit adultery, those who sleep with another man's wife, those who sleep with another husband. Who, uh, I wanted to, to hear from you if you are there. Good. Jacob and David, who came before? Jacob and David, who came before? We could learn even a lesson from Jacob. He called his firstborn son. Some of them, all his children came. Some of them, he blessed them. Some of them, he cursed them. We could learn a lesson from there. Look, the counsel of Ahitophel to Absalom. I believe Absalom was the firstborn of the children of David. It seems like, like that. Because I don't see any big man before Absalom. Now, in the book of Genesis chapter 49, verse 3, Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, my first son of strength, excelling in honor, Excelling in power, turbulent as the water, unstable as water, uncontrollable as a flood. You slept with my wife and discussed my bed, you will no longer excel. Who okay, can His father. Unstable as the water. You will no longer excel. This is the case on many firstborn. Jesus came to remove cases. But before we get there, don't just go and commit sin and say Jesus will remove it. Be careful. You may spend a lot of years in one spot because of that silly sin. The Bible says you will pay with your life the sin of adultery. Somebody that is committing adultery cannot move to the next level of his life because he will no longer excel. You have your shop. You are selling on your shop. And you being strange women on your shop, you kiss them. You touch them here, you touch them there. Then you're expecting people to come and buy on your shop and touch your good and buy. Forget about it. Shame and disgrace. You brought it to yourself into your business. In the olden days, we will have an old man sitting, imparting his wisdom to the next generation. Today, we don't have anything like that. We are in the city. Praise God. This is the word of God. If you say, look now, listen to what he's preaching. Uh -huh, that's exactly what God wants you to hear. <laughs> I want to move forward, but my problem is sexual immorality. I should be a very successful businessman. I should be a very highly unwanted man of God. But my problem is sexual immorality. Last time I said to you, your sex needs deliverance. You want to say amen? amen. You say, you my sex. Amen. Catch fire. Catch fire. Receive, deliverance. Receive deliverance. You will not control me. I'm controlling you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. The people we thought that are people of wisdom, people of knowledge, look at the advice they gave to Absalom. Sleep with your father's wife. We understand in the olden days, polygamy uh, was something to agree with, but not today. Today, this woman know they have a lot of mathematics in their mind. When they are coming in their marriages, for them to become rich and, and rich his mother, his own mother will say to him, you've seen the way you've grown up in poverty. Yeah? Now you are going to get married. Don't go there and be poor. Did you hurt me? Well, then he's pushing your head, too. 
They say, ah, this husband is poor. Let me get another one. Baby sugar. Daddy sugar. How do you call it? Sugar, sugar. Sugar daddy. <laughs> he said, no, this one is for the house. That one is for the, the shop. And the other one is for the makeup. Huh? Born again, don't live that kind of life. We fear God. Don't do it for the sake of business. God is the most powerful and successful businessman. Try to do business with him. You will see the way he will connect you. Ask Abraham, he will tell you. Ask Abraham, your father. When I call him, he was only one. I bless him and made him many. Don't think that fellow is lying to you. That will make your business successful. God in heaven is the author of success. This book of the law must not depart from you. It must not depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be successful in everything you will do for the rest of your life. Aitofel gave a wrong counsel. Why? Somebody pray. Father, turn the counsel of Aitofel into foolishness. Say it loud and clear. Let me give my son uh, the last uh, warning in the area of sexual immorality. Hebrew chapter 13, verse 4. See if you. Hebrew chapter 13, verse 4. Read with me, everybody, if you can. Have respect for marriage. Always be faithful to your partner because God will punish anyone who is immoral or unfaithful in marriage. You don't need to say, hey, you are a cheater. Hey, 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 you put camera here. Today we have a apps. You will know where your husband is gone, where your wife is gone, what he's doing. You know everything in that apps. Now you tell me, will you obey the apps or you will obey this word of God? Everybody wants to be respected. Is it not so? So start respecting your marriage. Have respect for marriage. Always be faithful to your partner. No matter how poor he is. Be faithful to your partner. Because God will punish anyone who is immoral or unfaithful in marriage. If you did not know those things, you can get away with it. But now that you know, change your lifestyle. We want you to move to the next level of your life. And the only person that will move you is God Almighty. Praise the Lord. What happened to Aitofel Council? You can see that that is, uh, he already recorded one of the wrong council. From the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 17, verse 7. 2 Samuel, chapter 17, verse 7. Who shall I say to Absalom, the advice Aitofel has given is not good this time. Uh, Aitofel has lost it. This is the man that when he gives you counsel, is like God speaking. I've seen successful men of God, very successful, in such a way that uh, you cannot deny their success. But before you know it, they begin to misbehave. I know a man of God, when it's raining, he has crusade and he's, the rain is coming. The rain even will come. Ta, ta, ta. Then he puts his finger in the sky. He says, stop. The moment he put his hand down, whew, the rain will stop. But the day I saw this man very sick, repenting, confessing, I wonder. I feel bad. Peace left me. I say, why? And he confessed all his sin. He was not ashamed to confess his sin. He said, family, I hate God. 
And they begin to behave like God. I miss God. I deceive many people. On his bed of hospital, about to die. I did not continue to write this story. Because it had impact in my life. When I fear men of God, it was...